Hey guys, welcome. Just wanted to uh, come on here and basically uh, start this part two of the red letters. And uh, let's uh, go into some uh, kind of current events right now. I wanted to kind of talk a bit about that. Um, also wanted to talk about the, so here, here's where we stand. We, we literally stand on uh, so many historic times and changes today. Um, right now, we have no current Speaker of the House, uh, third in line uh, in power to the world's most um, powerful nation, uh, United States of America, the government is not uh it's at the third level broken <laughs> uh so there we have that we have uh we are at the highest rate of poverty level um this is this is just amazing uh let me let me sh i think it was uh these guys here Let me see if uh, yeah. So let me let me throw throw you over here. Uh, let me get get it centered up here. Okay, hope you can see this. Uh, but but there you are. <laughs> The this is this is what they're saying right now. Let me try and get some get some sound on this. I think I muted it because um, it was being so loud. Okay, so let me see here. All right. Not sure why I'm not seeing my uh, sound here, but let me uh, get that on here. Yeah, I muted it. Let's just go back a uh, couple seconds here. More than double to 12.4%. And it went back to pre pandemic levels, but breaking all the gains from over the last few years. The Census Bureau cites this the expiration of pandemic so i'm not here to give you the 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 news so to speak in in, in full uh what we are trying to do here is is show you the state of, of this country the state of our environment the state of where we're at and and i could go to church corruption i could find all kinds of these these articles these these reports um of of how the fraud um of this one and that one um it, it's rampant it is all over um and today um unfortunately and and yet fortunately i say that with a two-edged sword um by saying that church has pushed a lot of people away from god and that's that's a very sad thought um not that church is what you should go to but it should not be tainted as it is today um there should be a let me say this right um there should be people that would get together and read the word of god um as we know it the best we can with what we have to work with, and uh, you know what I'm talking about if you listened to last week's uh, Part 1 Red Letters. Um, so the best that we can, um, and, and we, we talked emphatically about how the words of Jesus, uh, actually rather the, the words of the epistles and letters and, and, and other parts of the Bible contradict what Jesus taught. 
um, that is pretty sad. That is pretty sad that they are contradicting uh, the very basis of the uh, Gospels uh, as told by those writers of Jesus himself. Um, when you look at that, you're going to have to to reconcile some way, somehow, uh, what's right. Um, if by the epistles, and I mean the letters of Paul and, 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 and you know, Peter, uh, all, all, the, all the following of, of the c- comprised New Testament, all of those things that talk about Jesus must match the red-letter words of Jesus. Now, I find this very interesting that Jesus said, my word will judge you in the last day. Well, I don't know about you, but my ear kicks up and says, hmm, that I need to pay attention to. That right there is something important. So when I hear that, when I read that, either believe or you don't believe, right? Um, And Jesus said, rightly dividing the word of truth. And, and, you know, the centurion, I believe it was, or or, um, Roman, whatever. Uh, So what is truth? And that's a question today. What is truth? We have copies of copies that have been written down. They have, uh, in the King James Version, uh, they are canonized, which means that this was the collection of books the 66 books that they vetted um, and and put into one book uh, of many books, uh, 27 in the New Testament, uh, the first five, the Pentateuch, uh, the uh, which is uh, what the Jewish still has today, and as I understand it, it's exactly what they have: the first five books, uh, the Law of Moses. Uh, Genesis, um, Deuteronomy, you know the you know this uh, the five books. Um, anyhow, looking at those, we had Jesus come on the scene. Now we know by Genesis that Jesus said that there was a promise going to be made, or that promise was made that the the heel of the seed of a woman would bruise the head of the serpent. Uh, That was the foretelling of Jesus coming, and that's the way most people understand that to be. When we get to Jesus in the New Testament, all the prophecies that were leading up to Jesus, and Jesus is the subject of the whole Bible. Uh, The Jews don't believe that. Uh, The Jews do not believe that Jesus was any more than a mere mortal man, that that came and at, at, at best, he was a prophet. But no way, no how was he ever a Messiah. No way, no how did he come back to life. Um, they do not believe that. They are unbelievers when it comes to the New Testament. So, as we said last week, if if you want to be a Jew, that you're rejecting Jesus. And and again, I'll, I'll repeat this: that one person said, "I, I'm I'm an inward Jew. I'm a Christian, but I'm an inward Jew." Well, that doesn't mix; it will not work. Um, and Jesus said, "Because you didn't make up your mind, you're not going to be a part of me." And the verse in Scripture about that is, "If you're lukewarm, I'd rather you be hot." Or cold, and it's a pretty simple interpretation. I rather you believe or not believe, not these wishy-washy in the middle, trying to mix and stir up things that do not go together. The Old Testament and the New Testament do not mix. One's a prophecy for the coming of Jesus, and then Jesus came in the story. We have a new covenant. The old has passed away. And that's just like he said the old 
earth and the old heaven has passed away, and behold, I'm going to present you with new. And uh, people say, oh, well, God doesn't change and blah, blah, blah. No, well, <laughs> there are dispensations all through the Bible, and those people that say that teach Bible studies that say that God dealt with man this way, and then he dealt with man that way, and then he changed and did this and did that and that, but they'll say God doesn't change. And if he brought the flood and it repented him that he had made man and he brought a flood and saved eight souls, um, yeah, so you, you deal with that whatever way you have to. But the point is, is that God is in control, and if God's plan was to bring himself to a point and a place of time um, through the birth canals of a woman and become <laughs> a human in form as God, that is what he did. And he did change the way that man is to believe. And back in the Old Testament, if you are worth your weight in salt, you will know that the Old Testament, you had to look up to man. In the New Testament, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Come to me. And the only transfer of power, and it's not really even a transfer, but the only transfer of power that Jesus gave was to the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost comes in you, he will lead and guide you into all truth, rightly dividing the word of truth. Not all the Bible was truth in doing. And what I mean by that is that you are not required to do everything that's in that Bible. You must divide the word of truth. And, and you know, the 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 little UPCI members are going to say, oh, you're picking and choosing, blah, 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 because they've been programmed to say that. That's what they're programmed to do. And, and, and a matter of fact, since we've went in there, let's just segue on out. You know, this is, this is their motive. Their motive is to bring you in the church. If you show up to their church, most of the time, now you may find some of these churches, I've been in them, I showed up to a, a church that I went to years ago, and man, it just felt culty when I walked in, and it was just like, it's just them, just their family, Who who's that, okay? I come in, and you know, they kind of, by the end of the service, kind of warmed up to me, and I explained, you know, hey, I come here with uh, a former pastor many years ago, and you know, which was a good friend to that pastor. Uh, he did not remember me in whatsoever, uh, but either way, you know, oh. So just to say that there are some churches you can go to that are stale. Um, you know right away that that's not a place you want to be, not a place you want to probably even finish that service. And, you know, the guy got on his candy stick and it's just like a, a private meeting and he wasn't, he wasn't reaching out to anyone. He was just slamming whatever he could. Um, that, that was the candy stick that they were all licking. All right, so that's, that's what you get. The majority of churches, and I'm mainly, like I've told you many times, I, I don't know anything outside of the UPCI, Pentecostal, apostolic way, okay? I've never attended church in no other denominal religions. Uh, this, is, this was my life. That's, that's the only thing I adhered to. Uh, that was the way it was. So out of my experience, I can talk a lot on that. I can talk a lot firsthand, not, not hearsay. Um, so for the most part, you go into one of these churches and they are all happy you came. And they are, they are uh, welcoming, open arms, uh, smiles, uh, and uh, they're just trained to do that. And, and that's, that's, it's not all bad. It, it's a good thing. Uh, some are real. They, they won't come shake your hand because that's just who they are and they're not going to put on the front. 
and I guess I have to respect them more uh, than those that do. But uh, you'll find clicks in there, um, and you will find that. Uh, and 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 I, I understand. And and before someone is thinking, oh well, that's just humanity. Yeah, it is. It is. I agree with you. But when they put themselves on a pedestal, when they are the leaders of the church, so-called um, assembly, when they are in a leadership, they want to get up and sing, and they want you to sing with them. They want to get you excited about Jesus, they say. And, and, and you're supposed to stand up and, you know, even though they didn't shake your hand, you're supposed to get behind them and you know, root them on, and hey, yeah, let's let's get with Jesus here, yeah, okay, and that that's 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 the way they work. And, and don't get me wrong, there are some beautiful souls that attend these 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 uh, church buildings. Uh, there are some sincere people, and I would say most of them are sincerely just wrong. Um, I, I'm not saying they're evil. I'm saying that they have been taught something that they are carrying on from what they know. Um, what, is, what is the downfall? The downfall is, is that they will not apply themselves to know Jesus. They know what a man says, and they have put their trust and their faith in that man and his sayings and his interpretation and twisting of the Scripture, I'll say. Um, and and that, that's... They're going to heaven because they are being uh, subjected. They're being humble, and their way of being humble, they, they take it, and it's taught this way, so this is why they take it this way. They are taught that humility is bowing to man because, you know, we, we just want to rise up against each other, and, oh, it's me, me, me. And, yes, that may be characteristics of the world and, and, and unbelievers. However, <laughs> That's not the true meaning of humility. Humility doesn't mean you have to be subservient to man because Jesus said you've given to Caesar the things that are Caesar's. If you have a job, a secular job, you work for, you agreed, so there was your authority. You don't, that, that, that man doesn't have authority over you unless you give it to them. You agree for such and such for a certain amount of work. And you get paid. When that happens, then that happens. Okay, that, that is you have free will to quit that job. Uh, abide by the rules or not by, by the rules. Okay, uh, but church is different. They, they are going to tell you that, hey, listen, if, if, if you don't do exactly what you're told, um, and if you're not, if you're not, Listen, and when they say listen, that if you're not being dictated by the pastor, then you're one rebellious because you just don't want nobody over you, and it's your fault. It's your fault. Oh, I'm just going to listen to God. You say that's what they'll tell you, and that you you have a have a spirit of rebellion in you. Yes, you do, because this pastor should be able to control you like a slave. And that's, that's exactly what they mean. They'll say it nice. They'll, they'll restructure their words. They'll, they'll get all this stuff in a, in, a, in a little nice package and put a bow on it and, and let you know that, hey, you know, we love you. And, and you know, you really got to, yeah, humbug. Uh, so you'll, you'll go in there to these church services and everybody seems welcoming and I got some great music and you know people excited worship lively and let's let's you know give it to jesus and you know let's let's this is what god wants and 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 you may feel good and you definitely many times will feel the spirit of god i have to say it's probably the spirit of god because uh, if you're worshiping god i mean you don't know to worship them yet right you don't know to comply to that pastor yet. You're you're totally reaching your heart out. You're listening to what they're saying, what the words of the song are saying, and you're applying that for maybe even the first time. And God personally says, hey, 
I like that. That's a first for you. Now, God didn't go back behind the, the pulpit, back behind the, the music choir or, or musicians and the platform and said, hey, look at this. Look at these folks. Yeah, look what I did with them. You just stay with them and we'll be good. No, that's not what God's saying at all. God says, hey, your worship I like has nothing to do with everybody else in that room, has nothing to do with that church or that pastor. But they'll, did you feel God in here? Well, I felt God from heaven uh, because he reacted to something that I decided to do and to praise him. And trust me, I will tell you, if you go home and you do the same thing without all that, you enter into a closet, you'll still be there. You'll feel the same thing again. And, and it's a ruse for them to say that it happened because you came here. So technically, they're right. It happened because you were invited to worship with them and, and you followed suit. So in that sense, they had a little part in that, but they can't take any of the credit outside of they should have been worshiping for their own cause, right? So I know a lot of people, they, they you know, struggle with those things. And, but, you know, let's, let's progress on. So you, you come back the second time, and, and boy, they're just excited that you came back. And, and, and I'm going to try and just condense this down real quick. Uh, I don't want this to all be about that. But, um, you know, at some point, if you decide you're not going to buckle down to their standards, um, if there's a vote in the church, if you're not paying money, you're not going to get the vote. If you're not following the standards of the church, and you'll probably find them out really quick. Um, you'll get a Bible study for the church. Uh, you'll probably get a little welcome package and no matter where you are in life, you're, you're just going to have to go through this, and this is how we do things around here, and that guy's the chief. You got to listen to him. And uh, sister so-and-so and brother so-and-so, and this is that, and that's that. Here's the whole hierarchy of the church. And as long as you fit into that, we'll smile, shake your hand, hug your neck, and uh, invite you to the outings. And uh, you can even invite your friends. So this, this, is, this is it. Now you get outside that purview, that line, uh, you become a rebellion. You um, are no longer welcome. You'll feel the cold shoulders. And even in some of these places, you can be paying your tithes. I'm talking from experience here. First hand. You, you could be as kind as you can be. You can bring church people to church. You can, you can baptize in Jesus' name. You could be on fire for God as in their, uh, in their practice. Um, and you could be meeting everything and still be outside of their little clique because they are not wanting you to be in that clique because one of many things could be they either don't like the way you look, you, you, don't, you don't dress right, you dress funny, you're not, you're not rich enough, you don't have enough money, you're not driving the right car. It just wouldn't look good at your, your I don't know, what, what years, I don't know, 2000 um, Capri pulling up to their nice little subdivision at their kid's birthday party. That, that might not work out for them, right? So um, no matter what, there, there are so many quirks and, and you come and you think that, hey, you know, Jesus said, come one, come all. And they sing the songs of how this blood's for everybody. And, you know, I could, I could mention a lot of songs. I'm not going to go into all that. But the point is, you may not still fit in that little, little circle. That little circle that they have as a click. You're not going to be invited to the front row seating they got at the next rally. 
uh, here's the time. Oh, yeah, it's up on the wall on the calendar. But they're over there huddling, telling each other what they're going to bring. And, 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 hey, I'll bring this, you bring that. And we'll kind of, we'll, we'll, we'll take the first two pews. And then we'll have lunch outside afterwards. But you're not in that. You just got to go read on the bulletin board the time and the place. And, and we'll see you there. Hope to see you there. But you're not in that little clique. And so that, that right there, um, that's why many people um, are, are turned off of church. And, and, but, but they're too carnal. They're too carnal. That's why they don't want to come to church. No, they don't want to watch you not be like Jesus, but sing that you're like Jesus. They don't want to come to church and see your hypocritic ways, but yet you preach a different message. And you try to say, oh, I'm, I'm not perfect. I'm not. That's an excuse. You know, these, these, these preachers, these pastors get up there and I'm not perfect. And they try to act all humble and stuff. In the background, trust me, nobody's going to cross them. It's already a given. That, that senior pastor, that pastor that's up front, that, that's, that's acting as pastor, He's not the real pastor. No, you got you got somebody back in the backstage with little puppet strings that says, "Yeah, you can, you can, yeah, I want you to do it. I want you to, yeah, yeah, do it. Go ahead and, uh, yeah, you you just do what you want there. Yeah. All right, he he better. Uh, well, you know we don't do that. Oh, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So there's there's a whole nother thing going on in the background. There's a whole nother thing there, right? Um, the Monday morning people that show up to count the money. Yeah, you, you got all kinds of this stuff going on. This is all in the background, but that's the, you, you're just coming to the show. You're going to see the stage. You're going to see that everybody, you know, practices and then comes to for that one moment for the performance. So that you will get to feel good and feel like God's there. So you'll keep coming. So. If they could lead you into worship, they know God will, will, will touch you in your worship to him. And they play off of that. Now, it's not because of them that, you, you're, that God touches you. They know if they could lead you into pure worship to God, God will respond to you. And if he responds to you, you're going to have some outward appearance that's going to encourage other people. Now, is that all bad? Uh, no, not really, I guess. But the fakeness of this whole buildup, God is not pleased at all. And, and so, um, and, and I'm just trying to tell you what's real. I had a conversation with my son today, and I said, you know, what, what did you like about church when you went to church? And I had somebody say, oh, you took your family out of church. I did not take my family out of church. I not one time told my wife to not go to church. She can testify to that. She quit going to the church she was going to because when, when they say, hey, come up and worship and all this, and my daughter, Shane, which has Down syndrome, which is now 17, went up there to worship, and she was feeling God and touching God. The pastor got up because, he, you know, the service must progress nothing to do with God, right? And she wasn't, you know, uh, uh, an authority to, to be able to stop the service. So he walks up to her, whispers in her ear, which we didn't know. And my wife didn't even know until after I asked my daughter what he said. And he's like, uh, okay, you go back and sit back down in your seat. This interrupting her worship with God, go sit down in your seat. I'm, I'm going to speak now. I'm, I'm about to preach is what he told her. So she went and sat down. And uh, because of that, my wife wouldn't go back to that church. I had nothing to do with it. And you say, well, you quit going to church. I, I did because I can't sit under somebody that's not going to inherit the scripture and it's going to teach falseness. And that's exactly what was happening. I, I had had two meetings outside at a coffee shop with this pastor. Um, I quickly found out, and I even tried the second time, I found out that the word was not guiding him. He was guiding him. 
and what he was being taught by these other church leaders that had mega churches and that had big, big uh, money pockets. And so he wanted to be like them. And, and, and it was just all for a performance. And uh, so, yeah, yeah. And, and it's probably going to be 90 plus percent of your churches today. And that's, that's what they're all about. So uh, get off of that. The red letters, I, I wanted to introduce you today um, to something that I came upon. Um, and this, this is a, uh, a book uh, that I just uh, purchased for, I think, 10 bucks. Uh, but anyhow, this, this book, let me see here, um, the red letters, right? Um, yeah. So the red letters here, um, the red letters gospel. So as I mentioned last video, that there are 31,426 red letter words in the gospels of Jesus Christ. Um, that is almost 48% of the entire gospel. That is almost 50%, I'll say, of the entire four gospels. And this is not double counting the synoptics of, of when Jesus said the same things. So when you look at that, it's pretty cool. Um, and so you can, it's, it's called uh, synopticgospel.com. And I bought that uh, red letter um, uh, book. I just got it in PDF format. And uh, so let me see here if I can find it. Uh, I believe I preloaded it for you. Maybe I did or didn't. Okay. I got, I am not seeing it. Okay. Well, it should be right here. Okay, well, I did, I did load it. I'm not sure why it's not showing up. But regardless, um, the main consideration of this book was the detail each gospel account included or accounted for um, but all the words, even the parallel sections. Uh, so what you'll get out of this book basically is, I think it's five columns. I have not got to go through it yet, but you will get like five columns. You'll get a condensed version of what all four of them come together to say. And uh, I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to look at it. I'm going to see if, uh, you know, how good it is. If it's uh, definitely something that uh, is, is worthy of, of having. Um, and uh, I figure for 10 bucks, it's, it's, it's a good uh, study material. Uh, it's got the words of Jesus in it. So I don't think I can go wrong there. Um, so once again, as I mentioned to you before, is the fact that we have the words of Jesus in the Gospels. And if those words are not true, if they are not accurate, then you could pretty much throw away the rest of your Bible. So when you look at this, and I know that that sounds pretty drastic, right? So if, if I go here and then I come down and say, oh, well, let's, let's see what, uh, well, let's see what Romans 1 and 17 says. Um, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men and who hold the truth in unrighteousness because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. 
who do you suppose we are talking about here? We are talking about Jesus. Professing themselves to be wise, verse 22, they became as fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like unto corruptible man, into birds, four-footed beasts, and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanliness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie and who worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them un, up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the men, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meat. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. So these things fit right along with what Jesus says. These are parts, good parts. So when you look at those things, and, and, and let's, let's go to, where was it? I think it was John. Yeah. So John says, in the beginning was the word. Remember, he said, who knew from the foundation, the creation, from the beginning of the world. Here you see, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. And all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Who was the light of men? That was Jesus. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehendeth it not. And he goes on to say there was a man sent from God whose name was John and this same John, the Baptist, the forerunner, Jesus said that there was no one up to John that was greater than John. And he stopped there because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And that was none other but Jesus Christ. So you can, you can, you can, the law of Moses, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, uh, all the all the forerunners, all the prophets, everybody. There was nobody that was greater than John, and that was the words of Jesus. And when you see that, you understand what Jesus was saying. And when you look the next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. So when you look at these things, when, when Jesus said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah, thou shalt be called Cephas, which should be interpreted, is a stone. And Jesus told them the day following, Jesus would go forth into Galilee and findeth Philip and said unto him, Follow me. So when you look at all these things, Jesus said, follow me. Did he say, follow the law of Moses? No, he did not. Follow me. So when you follow Jesus, you're going to be all right. If you're following man, you're not going to be all right. It's not going to work out for you. Following man will get you nowhere. These folks that if you are not following the red letters of Jesus, and I'm going to end with this today, 
Thank you for watching. I appreciate those that, that take the time to hear uh, what the Lord has laid on my heart. Um, but you will find that if every letter following the Gospels is not about Jesus, if it's not uplifting Jesus, then it's not worth the paper it's been written on. Everything is valuable, I believe, in the Bible. I believe that God wanted us to see it and to read it. Is everything in the Bible instructional for you to do? No, it's not. It's to see the corruption of these men, how even men that walked with Jesus, and Jesus made that example while he was still here with Peter and with Thomas. He showed us that even those closest to him, or as it would seem, closest to him, have betrayed him, can betray him. And Jesus told Peter, Satan hath desired to sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you. And I tell you today, Jesus, while in the Garden of Gethsemane, has prayed for you and I, and he loves you, he is the only one who is able to remove your sins and allow you to make heaven your home. He is the key. Not Peter, not the door bearer. The ticket, the signed ticket, comes with the name of Jesus on it. And if you don't have that, even the gate bearer, even Peter at the gate, as they like to say, cannot let you in. So go in peace, uh, pray to God, go to your closets, worship him, feel after him that happily you might find him. Uh, live your life in fullness. Can you be a Christian and not attend a church? Yes, and you should. You should. If, if you want to have some friends to, to gather together and, 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 and have a Bible study with, that's up to you. But if you're leaning on a man to get you to heaven, if you're not connecting to God yourself, and you're not being able to allow the Holy Ghost to lead and guide you into all truth, and you have a man over that, that you're, you're subservient to, you have not followed Jesus' will. You have not followed his word. And all those things that tell you to do so came from man and not from God. They're in there for a reason, but not for your obedience to them. They're to let you know that these people, this is what they did, this is what they're doing with what they got. They have twisted the words of Jesus and the meaning of what true life and abundant life in Jesus really is. God bless you. Uh, Go in peace, and I, I appreciate again all those that would uh, would watch these videos that would that would be part of this ministry. Um, I thank you, and God bless you, and have a great day in Jesus' name.